All right. There are a lot of great videos for business people about how much they can make in traditional business careers. How much, how much money you make? Things like investment banking, private equity, venture capital, management consulting. But there are fewer videos about how much business people can make at startups. And unfortunately, when you're talking startups, this is when it's the most ambiguous. Startup compensation can vary quite a bit by experience level, team, type of startup. And in this video, I'm going to try to give you data points so that you can best orient yourself so that if you are in conversations with a startup or you're just curious, you know what you can expect. I think it makes the most sense to break companies down into three different stages, early, mid, and late stage. Early stage companies are gonna be the ones that have maybe some seed funding or angel funding, and they're likely very small teams, fewer than 10 people, working out of a co-working space. When we get into mid-stage companies, these are ones that are scaling. They have a lot of funding, and there's less of a chance of them just completely failing, and more the risk for these companies is more of plateauing or slowing down. So these are high growth startups that already have some traction and some revenue coming in the door. And finally, there's late stage companies. And these startups probably shouldn't even be called startups anymore, but they are important because they all compete for the same talent. Companies like Airbnb, Uber, I'll even include Google and Meta into these conversations because all of the comp ends up being pretty similar. And again, if you're gonna to go to a company that is way more mature, you'll have the security, and then it comes down to compensation for where you decide to go. The next way we're gonna break this down is by experience level. And the way that I think about experience level is early, mid, and late, similar to startups, but early stage will be anywhere from just out of college to a few years of experience. Mid will be you know, five, seven years of experience, and then late stage will likely be a decade's worth of experience in these different job roles. I should also note here that there is a fourth category, the executive category, and this is where things just completely fall off the rails in terms of compensation, meaning that these people can earn a seriously high amount of money. But I'm not including this because after a decade or late stage experience, things can get really exponential for the most talented people. And I think putting anything in here, the ranges would be way too big and it would just be super confusing. So choosing to go with early, mid, late, know that people work for way more than a decade, but this is going to be a way that's like most linear, meaning salaries follow most of a pattern until you get to about 10 years. And then things start to happen based on people's experience and what companies they work for and whatnot. We're gonna look at this data across three different common business functions. I know there are way more opportunities for business people at startups, but we're gonna look at product management, sales, and growth in marketing. With that in mind, let's start talking about our first group of salaries, which is product managers. I'm gonna talk about product management in more detail here so that you get a sense for what the stages are for each of these. But for the next two after this, I'm just gonna show you the charts and then I'll point out specific things or we'll talk through a couple scenarios. So with that in mind, let's talk in more detail about product management. And yes, I am including product managers on the business side of things. I think product management sits right at the intersection of business and engineering. But what I've found is that really good business athletes can make amazing product managers and often end up making up the majority of the product management team. These are often super competitive jobs. When I was teaching at Kellogg, there were only you know a few opportunities for, for MBAs to go and recruit for these product management rotational jobs. And they usually comp extremely well, especially compared to other teams at startups. So with that in mind, we'll talk early, middle, late stage and different types of your career. All right, let's do it this way. Let's go through early stage in career to late stage and we'll just do early stage by size of company. So if you are just out of school or if you have a couple years of experience and you wanna go be a product manager at an early stage company, you will likely look for a decent base salary and then you'll also be looking for some more equity because you are taking on so much risk. Your equity may sound low and you know, to be honest, it likely is, but this is one of your first jobs and you will be learning quite a bit on the startup's dime. So with that in mind, I think that it's a fair offer, especially for someone just coming out of school, looking to go to an early stage startup that may not be able to afford that much. If you go to a mid-stage startup, this is gonna be a little bit more competitive because there are just fewer good, healthy, 
fast growing startups out there. And because of that, if you're able to land one of these jobs out of school or with a couple years of experience, you can expect a big salary bump compared to early stage. So for these companies, you are looking at something like $120,000 in base salary with equity over the course of four years, totaling 100,000, meaning that you're going to invest about $25,000 a year. So I would say that for an early stage employee at a mid-stage startup, you're looking at roughly 145 in total comp. And finally, if you're early in your career and you were able to land a job at one of the most competitive spots, which is Google product management, meta product management, et cetera, or Uber, you know, these are the late stage startups. And again, I'm gonna include Google and meta in here because these set the bar for comp at the late stage startups. So all these late stage startups are fighting for talent against Google and Facebook. So I'll just, even though they're not technically startups, I'll still use their comp as a benchmark. If you were to go to one of these companies, I think you can expect something like 140,000 in base with something like $40,000 a year in equity. So you may be offered 150, 100, 150K in equity over the course of four years, plus a really nice base. And keep in mind with these late stage startups that you do get all the food and everything that you want. A lot of the office accommodations come with that. As we move up and you get to mid stage in your career, now you have years of product management experience under your belt and you are able to be at least a contributor. You're learning less on the company's dime and maybe you're even starting to lead teams or support teams. You need less guidance and you're doing more of the execution work for product management. In this case, if you are at an early stage startup, you will command a little bit more cash, but remember that the early stage startups don't have cash. So you'll command a little bit more cash, but the value here is equity. So if you are later in your career, you are taking a risk by sacrificing cash in order to get more equity from the company you're working with. And here I could see you earning somewhere like 110,000 in base, but you do go up to 0.50% of equity. So a much larger chunk because you are bringing that experience and you're gonna help grow the company. Equity value is gonna to change to cash at a mid-stage startup because the equity is worth more, uh, it has more of a trade value. Like there is, they have an understanding of what their worth is, unlike the very early stage startups. And they can also pay more because they have some cash in the bank. So with this in mind, if you have good experience and you're gonna go join a mid-level startup, I think that you can expect 200 in base salary, which does sound much higher, of course, than, the, than when you first join at 120. And then you may, might be able to get away with 50 to 75K a year in equity. So you'll be presented with, let's say 200 to 250 in options uh, over the course of four years. So definitely a much higher salary here. You get into like these bigger numbers. And finally, if you go to late stage, I think you're looking at 250 in salary and then 100 in equity per year. So potentially getting something like 400 that's gonna vest over the course of you know, four years. And when I say mid-level here, I am talking, you know, you are the direct report to someone who is very late stage or very senior. This is not just your second job out of college. I think that that would still count in more of like the early to mid stage. So these are gonna be people who are late twenties doing really well in their career. And finally, we'll talk about product managers who are late in their career. You are now being hired to lead a team, to be, you know, closer to that executive level, but there will be people reporting to you and you're a big investment for the company. These early stage startups just don't have enough money to compete with mid and late stage, so they end up having to pay you in equity. If you are at an early stage company with this 10 plus years of experience, I think your salary cash wise is still at around the 130 range, but the big difference is equity. And here you could expect to get even up to 2%, depending on how small the team is. So you are taking this risk by joining an early stage startup, but you are getting comped in quite a bit of equity. So if the company were to work out, that's gonna be worth a ton down the line. But of course you take on the risk here with lower salary and then there's the possibility that the company fails. So you are gambling a little bit more. When we're talking mid-stage, you are gonna see a bump from mid to late stage in your career at these like series B, series C companies, but they don't have enough cash in the bank. Um, so you will likely see more of this comp come in the form of equity. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a base somewhere in the 225 range with equity now 
increasing from that 75 per year at the mid-stage to now if you're a lead, maybe it's like 100 or 125 per year. Uh, this, it's important to note that this is not the ceiling of product managers. I mean, if you're talking chief product officer, or very senior product manager at these companies, then the comp is gonna be like way, way, way different. These are simply people who have like worked their way up to maybe director level. Um, so the highest of more of this linear career growth before the doors get busted way open for the best of the best people who get recruited with just insanely high numbers. And finally, senior product managers at more of the established companies, we're talking base now can be much higher because companies like Meta and Google have cash on hand in order to recruit the best talent. So I could see cash getting up to 300 for these late stage companies with equity valued at somewhere about 200 per year. Um, so making your all in comp somewhere close to 500,000. So these numbers, they get exponentially higher the more senior you get, but not everyone is able to uh, continue working up this chart. Of course, these clusters are vague, all encompassing, and really the best that we can do with keeping this video as succinct as possible. So if you find yourself um, with like four years experience, you know, maybe comp yourself between the early and the mid. And then if you're going to a company that raised their first round of series A, maybe you're between the early and the mid on startup stage. And hopefully this will give you enough to where you can get a sense for a range. And if you are working these jobs, please leave in the comments if you think that this makes sense. I have checked this with a, um, a bunch of different sources and it seems like everyone is okay with these types of numbers. Let's move on because the next one we're gonna talk about is sales. Here's what you're looking at for the different stages and the different levels uh, for how much you can make for total comp. Keep in mind that equity here is much lower for sales. So it's not uncommon for sales to get commission and why you see the salary so high for sales compared to something like product management is because there's usually some sort of like 50-50 split. If the sales team is able to hit their goals, they get double their salary. So when you're looking at this, and let's just say you're looking at a mid-stage uh, level person at a mid-stage startup, you see this all in comp at 150. You know, maybe this is an account executive. This is gonna actually be structured as like 75 and then with the opportunity to hit another 75 if things go really well. Sales is going to be one of the occupations where if you continue progressing down this path, the salary or compensation goes way, way, way exponential. So keep that in mind that there are more rungs beyond just late stage if you can get there. And if you're a good salesperson, that will make these numbers even look small. Finally, let's talk growth and marketing. Now, when I talk growth here, I mean people who are doing the execution. So marketing managers, marketing strategists, people who are coming up with the creative and getting it live on Facebook or TikTok and whatnot. And I think the thing that you're gonna notice right away here is that the comp looks kind of similar to product management, but it is just a little bit less. And I think that's generally true. I mean, the product management jobs tend to be a little bit more competitive. They potentially include longer hours. They potentially include a little bit of a different skill set. You know, something like SQL, which is a real nice to have on the growth side, is going to be more of a need to have on the product management side. I also think that the lifestyles are um, somewhat different. So it's not uncommon to see people from the growth teams end up lateraling to the product management teams if they're looking for a different way to contribute to the company. So the ceilings here are gonna look a little bit lower than product management, but that doesn't mean they're low by any means. I think that growth is a fantastic career and it does afford you a ton of opportunities if you were to start in growth and then move to other um, functions within the business. All right, I hope you found all these charts helpful. Again, they are just data points and they are meant to be used where you can just like pick where you're at and try and figure out exactly what the compensation would be like for someone with your experience or the company you're going to. Please leave in the comments if you found this to be helpful or if you work at a company and you can verify that this is similar. Um, if you do like this type of stuff, I have a few other videos that you can watch and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and it helps the channel a ton. Okay, thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.